Tech family, it's Josh. Two months ago, I was super excited to get the new Dell XPS 9300, which I bought for myself as my daily driver. It was so full of promise with Intel's new Ice Lake processor and that gorgeous 13.4 inch edge to edge display. Unfortunately, it was a complete letdown and I gave it one of my most negative reviews to date. I raised several issues and wrapped up by stating that it just wasn't ready for prime time and suggesting people look elsewhere. Well, after two months of solid usage, I'm back with my long-term thoughts on this laptop, including why I still hate it and why I kept it. If you haven't watched my original review, please do so as this is going to be more of a qualitative discussion. I'll post links of it in the description below. At the end of this video, if you like what you watch, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the incredible amount of work that goes into making these. Don't laugh, but I actually ended up buying three Dell XPS 9300s. I first bought the i7 version, but it ran so hot to the touch that I ended up buying the i5, as rumor had it i5s run cooler. Unfortunately, it also ran hot. If you haven't watched my i5 vs i7 video on this laptop, I'll also post that in the description below. After I returned the i5 version, Dell had a big sale on the i7 version, dropping the price by over 300 US dollars. I tried to do a price match, but it was taking a while and I didn't want to miss the sale. So I ended up buying a second i7. This one had a slightly brighter screen, so I returned the first i7. Note to manufacturers and retailers, especially Lenovo, Dell and Best Buy, stop with the regular rotating sales. We are not stupid. We know what you are doing. It is just a pain and causes people to have to return laptops and rebuy them. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to go through what I originally didn't like about this laptop and tell you if my thoughts have changed since. Plus, I'm then going to talk about a couple of new issues. Yay. Fan noise. Honestly, it isn't as bad as I originally thought. Compared to the MacBook Pro 13 for 2020, it is about on par for light loads and somewhat quieter for heavy. Heat on the chassis is this laptop's biggest problem, and I have tried all thermal modes a gazillion times and owned three different units. It's kind of like the fans on this laptop are mostly decorative. Seriously, under any load at all, this laptop's chassis becomes a furnace, getting around 10 degrees Celsius hotter than any other laptop I own. Just to put it in perspective, 10 degrees Celsius is the difference between a nice beach day and a cool day requiring a light jacket. This laptop really is not comfortable to use on your lap. It's way too hot. Yes, it's nice that they put so much power in a tiny chassis, but it really comes at a cost. In my video, I talked about several odd issues with the graphics, like windows becoming grayed out and my external monitor going black for a couple of seconds when I plug it in. Although these are no longer issues for me, I have found another one. When I play a video on the external monitor, there are these random flashes over the video. But when I play the same video on the internal display, it's fine and plays as normal, even with the monitor plugged in. I have all the latest drivers, Windows updates and BIOS, and yes, this still occurs. I also brought up two other stability issues in my original review. This laptop would occasionally freeze and videos in Facebook would stop playing after about three seconds. These now seem to have been resolved. One new issue that I found is that the colors and brightness shift, especially when it's plugged into the power. It's completely out of the blue and it is so annoying. I'm using the laptop and all of a sudden the brightness will change and the colors become a little fluoro. I've turned off every possible thing that may be controlling the brightness and colors like adaptive brightness. I also followed guidelines online and downloaded Intel's graphics command setter to turn off any similar features there. It seems many people have this issue on not only this laptop, but lots of the Dell XPS range. The rumors imply that Dell has some auto brightness adjust feature that you can't turn off. The only workaround that I found is when it occurs to lower the brightness and then re-raise it, which seems to reset it, but it's super annoying. By the way, I'm sorry that I can't show you an example of this, but it's really hard to predict when it occurs. And lastly, I found the coating used on the frost white model to not be very durable. It seemed to get scuffed up very easily. Anyway, it's frustrating, but after two months, I cannot recommend this laptop. It's a disappointment. I'd advise you to look at the Lenovo X1 Carbon, which although dated and less powerful, just works, or the MacBook Pro 13. By the way, I am getting in the HP Spectre in a week or so, so we'll see how that fares. The reason why I kept the XPS 9300 is because I was hopeful. 
it is a glimpse into the future of laptops. It has a gorgeous design, it is really lightweight, it has a decent keyboard, and I just hope things would improve. Plus, I knew that you wanted more content on it like this long-term review, and probably a look at how Linux runs on it. That being said, I find myself avoiding using it and turning to other laptops like the MacBook Pro 13. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.